So uh, what I have so far, uh, if, if we look in here, I've got my game, and you'll notice when I save the game, I'll give it a name, version 1. Today, I'm going to move it on to version 1.1 because I'm going to make a few modifications to it, okay? Um, you, I put in the, I saved it to my, uh, my memory stick there, and I have some project notes in here, okay? I'll just overwrite that. So I've put some programming in for the mouse. I've chosen a mouse character and a cat character, and I've put some uh, script in there for the mouse. The next thing I'd like to look at is the background, okay? At the moment, it's a, a white uh, background. So on the sprite selection area here at the bottom, I'm going to click on the stage, and then I can see I can write a script for a stage in the same way I can write a script for the, the sprites, the cat and the mouse sprites. But what I want to do is I want to change how it looks. So rather than for a sprite where you have costumes up here, I have backgrounds here for the stage. So I'm just going to import one. You can paint or invent one yourself, but I'm going to import one here. You can take one from your camera. And I'll just choose one of the indoors ones there. So I'll, yeah, I'll have the party room, why not? Okay, so if I want to write a script for the cat, obviously, at the moment, I have the stage selected down in the area here. I have to select the cat. So be careful of that. If you're writing any script, make sure you have the correct item selected. You'll see the script here for the mouse shows up when I have him selected. So I have no script for my cat yet. So what I want the cat to do, when the game starts, what's the game start command? The green flag. Yeah, we'll use that as our game start command. So under the control area here, under the control palette, I'll pull out that, okay? So I want a whole set of events, events to be triggered here. And I want the cat to be moving around the whole time while the game is on. So I'm going to use one of these forever loops, because he's going to keep moving and moving and moving until the game stops, OK? So while that's clicked, he's going to move. And then I'm going to pull out um, some motion here. And what, I'm going to be changing the x and the y direction. No motion left. Pardon? No motion left. On your one? Okay, I'll, I'll look at that. Uh, that's because you have the, the stage selected and you can't move the stage. So you select the cat first and the motion of blocks can apply to the cat. Okay, so that's why it's important if you're writing a program for the cat and you first select the cat. So go, click on the cat there uh, in the sprite selection area. See where my mouse is here? Yeah. yeah, and now you have motion blocks so you can write a script for the cat there. Okay, so I can change his X direction, I can change his Y direction. So I'll notice when I click on the cat here, he's moving around and he's off into the sunset, he's gone. I'll just stop that script running. So he's disappeared in me. So what I'll do is I'll just change it by minus 10 there to get him back. And I'll start the script and I'll stop him there before he goes anywhere too quickly, okay? So the green arrow to start and the red arrow stops all the scripts. Okay. Now, at the moment, he moves about just in one direction. So I want him to make to make him move randomly. So under the operators area here, so each time he goes into the loop, rather than moving constantly in the same direction, I want you to pick a random motion, okay? And I'll pick another random motion. If I leave that at one to 10, what will happen is he'll only move up and he'll only move to the right. So what I need to do is I need to put in some minus there. So I'll pick random numbers between minus 20 and plus 20. So at any given moment, he's going to jump in a random direction. Uh, in a jump, it could be he could be jumping one, he could be jumping five, he could jump 10 at any given moment. So I'll go from minus 20 to plus 20. I'll make my jumps. If I went from minus 50 to plus 50, the jumps would be too exaggerated, if you like. So I'll click the mouse again. So constantly when you're developing here, it's a case of putting in a bit of code playing with a bit of code and see how it affects your sprite. So there you are. What's wrong here, I wonder? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit too fast, isn't it? So, yeah. Changes in a random direction. He waits a bit. He changes. He waits a bit. Then he goes to the top of the loop again, and he repeats the process over and over and over. That's the great thing about computer code, uh, or computer programs in general. See the way this is a repetitive task, and you know the way we use computers to do repetitive tasks for us? It's because they're good at looping and going through that. And we're not very good at, after an, you know, half an hour of us doing something repetitive, we lose our concentration. But a computer doesn't work like that. It's a complete machine. So you'll find that loops are something that are very handy uh, when you're doing your computer coding. OK, I'll run this now, and we'll see is this better or worse. OK, what's the problem now? It's just a... Go ahead, help me. How do I fix the problem? Yeah, I'll change my, I'll change my weight. OK, the random jump, he's moving, I think, 
a nice kind of motion, but maybe he, we want him to to wait. I'll just move it down to quarter a second, 0.25. It's going a bit quicker there, and I'll move this down to 0.25. And he's going a little bit quicker, maybe just 0.1 of a second. And 0.1. Yeah, so that, that's a little bit quicker, anyhow. We'll leave it at that for now. You decide uh, on your own game, okay? Okay, so the next thing I'd like to do is he's, he's got a problem. He's going off the edge of the screen there. Do you notice that? Yeah. yeah. And there's a very handy <laughs> control here under the motion blocks. So I'll just click back up here to my motion palette. And if I scroll down to the bottom there, I have a command there called if he's on the edge, he bounces, okay? So you can see here, he'll never get off the edge of the screen because when he hits the edge of the screen, he'll just bounce off the edge of the screen. So you won't, that will uh, keep him on the screen there. See the way he's touching the edge of the screen, but he, he never kind of quite hits it there. Okay, the next thing I'd like to do as well is he's moving up, down, left, and right, and I want to move him more randomly in turning directions as well so, uh, so that uh, he moves more uh, at different angles. So I'll just put in a bit of uh, a turn angle there as well. <coughs> And in motion, yeah, I'll show you how to reset them actually. Yeah, I'll just stop the script there. If you find your sprite just got upside down or bananas or whatever you want to call it, in this uh, middle area here, if you double click on your sprite, it just resets them back to the correct position, okay? I'm just going to put a turn command here, one of the turns, and I'll snap it in here. See the way I can just snap in and out the commands. And he's turning the same way the whole time, so again, I'm going to use the random operator again. And I'll turn them any angle between uh, minus 90 and plus 90 degrees. So you can see there when I stop my script now, he's at a completely random angle, and I can just double click on him to reset.